Today, we're going to be talking about some of the news out of CES, and that is the new FPV goggles from Orca, as well as their initial showcase of their upcoming digital FPV system. Now, you may have seen some of this info already, and if you have, you're probably not going to learn that much new, but please do hang around because I am going to talk a bit about the ASIC situation with their digital FPV system too. Now, to jump over to the desktop, first of all, what we have is a new set of digital FPV goggles, which are called the Orca FPV v1 pilot this is an updated version of their original goggles which has a couple of tweaks and new features overall i'll say up front there are no massive massive changes here in the sense of anything groundbreaking it is a version 2 really of their original goggles with tweaks and improvements all over the place but there is no dramatic new like digital FPV system integrated it is the beginnings of their move into digital and I'll explain that as we walk through now the biggest changes on these new goggles is a few things for instance, they have added a new digital input connector, which is this located here, which allows you to have custom digital HD systems integrate in the goggles wirelessly or without a cable. So what I mean by wirelessly is basically there is a pin connector in here, which rather than having, say, a HDMI cable, you can have a specific goggles module that clips on and you don't need any additional power or signal wires. At the moment, they've said this is designed to be used with their future digital FPV system, but they're also open to working with other FPV manufacturers such as HD0, and they do want to get HD0 compatibility for this in the future. They have mentioned that, but they haven't said that they are strictly working with them. What they're saying is they're looking to add integration for that soon. We then have a number of other changes to the goggles themselves. They say they are silent but cooler than ever. There's new fans on board for not only keeping the goggles cooler, but also actually improving the anti-fogging feature. Sony OLED displays, like we had before. New improved higher voltage rating up to 6S with over voltage and reverse polarity protection as well. This new custom connector and a co completely new OSD and menu system. There is also a whole new set of optics on these goggles where they've improved the overall behavior of the optics themselves. If I just shift around to the bottom, you can see that we've got all new adjustment options and they've improved it to remove chromatic aberrations, ghosting and pin cushioning as part of the new optical engine. What is, though, a bit of a downside of this, which has been noticed by many, is that this new lens system has resulted in a reduction in the field of view. Whereas the original orcas were 44 degrees at 4x3, these new ones are now 37 degrees in 4x3 and 33 degrees in 16x9. The screen resolutions remain 1280 by 960 and you do have that 960 DVR built in too. As I've mentioned, they do have that up to 25 volt or 6S power input and there's still a micro HDMI input alongside that new digital connector that we've got on the top. For me, it is a bit of a shame that there is a reduction in the field of view. And for instance, if I show you that compared to the original FPV ones, there is a great tool on Oscar Lang's website that allows you to compare the field of view of goggles. So for instance, here on the left, I've got the original Orca ones in 4x3 with a 44 degree field of view. And on the right, I've chosen the HDOs, which have a 37 degree field of view, just like you have on the new Orca one pilots so as you can see there is quite a reduction compared to what we had before and if we compare that to say the sky zone 04x's or the hdo 2s so let me just find the sky zone 04x at 4x3 which is 46 degree field of view it is a big big difference and if you then compare it to the dji which is 50 degree field of view it's quite substantial. For me, 
it's a bit of a shame. I was really looking forward to these goggles and I really wanted to buy a set as my second next new goggles, not my second ones, but my newest FPV goggles. But I am a little cautious now. And what I'm going to probably do is borrow a set before rushing out to buy them. I'd love to try them. I'm just a bit cautious on this reduction in field of view. And remember, it's smaller again in 16 by 9. So if we compare it to the original FPV ones in 16 by 9, which were 40 ones, and we're now down to 33. But if I find, if I go to the 32 degrees, which is one degree smaller of the Fat Shark Reconversion 2s, you can see there again, it is substantially smaller. And if I compare that to, say, the HDO 2s at 16 by 9, again, it is quite a difference. So for me, it is a bit of a shame that we have had this reduction, but it is something I want to check for my own view rather than make a decision directly up front. Overall, though, that is the biggest set of changes. It's worth me being specific that there is no digital FPV system built into these new goggles. They have this new dedicated connector for adding a module, but there is no digital FPV system built in. They still have HDMI. You still have the standard goggles module option, and you need to put a module in it yourself. There isn't one included, but there is no integrated digital FPV at this time. Price-wise in the UK is £420, so they are that higher-end goggles. Uh, not sure what they are showing in the US. It's picking up UK for me. Again, they are the higher-end type of goggles alongside the Skyzone 4 xs and the HDO2s, so you are expecting that higher-end price as well. Nice upgrades with regards to what they've done. It just feels a little bit that they've compromised the field of view as a result of the improved optics. Now, as I mentioned, this was one part of the news because whilst we do have a set of digital FPV goggles, they have also shown us a little hint of what's going to be happening with their digital FPV system in the future. It's been no secret for a while that Orca are working on something and we now finally have some images. Now, these have been shared pretty much all over the place in the last couple of days. There is no digital FPV system you can buy today. It is simply a sort of preview of what's to come in the future with some details on the system, but we don't really know a lot. In their stand, they showcased three VTXs, which is for their upcoming system. The first is a digital 5.8 gigs VTX, 30 by 30 in size. The second was a more commercial or military grade 5G VTX. Not really interesting for average FPV, but that's going to be more military stuff. And then there is a longer range 2.4 gig version as well. Now, details of what this system is is very, very scant right now. This we know is a 30 by 30. It has dual MMCX inputs, but we don't know much more than that. We don't know resolution. We do know that they are targeting themselves to get around 20 milliseconds of latency, but it isend clear if that's end-to-end -end latency or is that 20 milliseconds without the camera. We think it's fixed latency, but it isn't 100% confirmed as far as I'm aware yet, and it can be variable. There is also some other things that they've told us about it too, and that is that it is compatible with their version 1 and 2 goggles. For the version 2s, it will be an external module that goes into this dedicated port, but the receiver module will also have HDMI output that will work with the original V1s as well. Now, there has been a lot of questions around what is this system, and the reality is we don't know a huge amount, but what we do know is it is not HDMI. HD0 based. It is not DJI based. It is their own digital software system. So uh, their own SDR, which they're planning to run on off the shelf silicon. They're not running their own custom ASIC at this time. And the plan is to be using some of the new 
5G related chipsets, as I understand it, that are emerging onto the market right now. When I mean 5G, though, don't think I'm talking cellular technology. These are chipsets that are just much more powerful and designed to be used in these new high power 5G devices. And they're going to run their FPV system as an SDR on top of that off the shelf hardware. They have also mentioned that they're looking to spin up their own silicon as well in the future, but they're not there today. And what is interesting is they seem to be hedging their bets two ways. Their initial plan is to try and do this on off the shelf hardware, but work on their own custom ASICs later. There is a lot of plus and negatives to whether you go for your own ASIC or not, and whether you can do it on off the shelf silicon. It's not as much about what is better, it is what is better for your own needs. For instance, spinning your own ASIC can be as much as five to ten million dollars, but it can be as low as a hundred thousand dollars as well, depending on your node and application. The real benefit to companies choosing their own ASICs is cost in the long run, because whilst there is a massive expense getting the ASIC ready in the sense of the design and having the hardware in place ready to make them, think of it like having molds made. That part of it is really expensive. But once that's in place, the actual wafer cost per unit is very, very low, and it can be as low as one or two dollars. It's just the initial outlay that costs massive amounts of money, but don't think it has to be up to 5 million. You can get a six spun for as little as 100,000, depending on what you intend to do. And Orca have been getting funding in place to try and help them do this. And it is going to be interesting to see what they do in the future. They have also said, though, that they intend to work with HD0 and get their goggles module compatible, hopefully via that new connector on the front, too. And what that does tell us is whilst they've got an eye on the future for their own digital FPV system, right now they're concentrating on the goggles and to sell goggles, they need it compatible with existing systems. And that includes HD zero. Overall, it is interesting what we've had from Orca, and I'm sure we're going to find out a lot more over the next coming days and weeks. Today, these goggles are available to order. You can get them now, but the HD system is at least three months off, probably six, maybe a bit longer. That's currently a future project that we're going to see come to light over the next months and it is going to be interesting to see if they can bring it to DJI especially because it is ripe for the picking right now an alternative system not necessarily completely fixed latency it doesn't have to out and out compete with the out latency of HD0 because that is perfect for racing if they can bring a digital FPV system to the market that is comparable to DJI, there is a real possibility of them causing quite a bit of disruption, especially if they can get camera manufacturers on board and other manufacturers and maybe even license out that software and have other manufacturers making units too. They did also show a flight controller, which I'm not really going to cover in this. It wasn't particularly anything exciting. It had ghost built in. Um, I'll, I might talk about that on the Sunday live stream, but today I'm not going to really go into any details on that. It's not a great market to enter because it's bottom. Everything is a race to the bottom in the flight controller market right now. For me, the big interesting one was these new goggles, which is the FPV one pilots and the new upcoming digital FPV system. But it isn't here today. And that is it from me on this one. I hope you found the information useful. If you have, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Please do consider supporting the channel via a Patreon and buy me a coffee as well. If you are interested in me doing a review on these goggles, please do let me know in the comments. I'd be really interested in knowing if you guys do want me to check these out. I, I am that close to ordering them because I've been holding back on getting a set of goggles. I've been looking at the O4Xs. I've been looking at the HDO2s, but I wanted to wait for these. 
I I'm I need to have a look if I can find them somewhere I can order them and if I have then the option of sending them back I can if I'm not happy with the field of view but do let me know if you want me to and if you do want to support that please do check out the links in the description as I've said it's only by you guys supporting us are we able to keep making content like this